Hello and welcome to www.justplayer.co.uk uh, Today I'd like to just take a few moments to demonstrate to you a product that I've just received uh, from seedstudio.com Seed Studio are a supplier of electronics, mostly to hobbyists um, and uh, last year you may have read my review on the DSO Nano which was their first um, colour pocket oscilloscope it was an interesting product because it had a very low price point of $89 um, and for that you got yourself a single channel oscilloscope. Oscilloscopes are generally very expensive items, especially for the hobbyists. They can be basically outside their price range. Um, most hobbyists, if they do invest in an oscilloscope, uh, tend to be able to justify buying perhaps a, a second-hand analogue oscilloscope from eBay perhaps. Uh, but the Nano product that came out last year was uh, really sort of changed that for a lot of people because Although it wasn't a particularly well specified product, um, having a, a relatively slow sample rate and being only single channel, the price point that it was and, and the portability of it uh, made it an ideal tool for hobbyists who weren't perhaps needing the most high, the, the highest performing oscilloscopes, uh, but were looking for something for test purposes to be able to show them a, a wave to maybe demonstrate a circuit was working correctly, or maybe even used to debug or to reverse engineer a circuit. That was uh, then. Seed Studios, uh, buoyed on the success of that product, have for uh, the last while been developing a, a, a new bigger brother to the DSO Nano called the DSO Quad. Uh, price points at the moment haven't been fully decided, although they are offering a pre-production run of uh, 300 units and they're asking $159 for that. Uh, and for that what you're getting is a, a quite a bit more advanced product. It's uh, a, a four channel product um, uh, rather than a, a single channel product and the sample rate from the product is, is quite a bit better. It's still pocket sized scope and it still has a colour screen etc. You can see what um, you're getting in the package just now. Now this may of course vary because the product's not due to go on, uh, on general sale for quite some time uh, but just give you some idea of what Seed Studios supplied me in the package they sent with the engineering sample. Um, they sent a, a standard sort of probe here. It is a one times probe rather than a ten times probe. Uh, the DSO quad has a, a, a maximum input of uh, 80 volts per channel. Um, so obviously without the ten times then uh, that limits you a little bit. But for sort of digital circuits etc it should be more than enough. Um, they also supply a slightly fl somewhat flimsier set of probes which are these sort of uh, standard um, clip open probes uh, which are handy for attaching to circuits um, and uh, they're lightweight, it's, it's obviously for a second channel. Uh, with this product I reckon that you're probably going to wear these out pretty quickly uh, but the, uh, the more um, uh, traditional probe uh, including its accessory I think will, will last you a good long time. So let's just have a look at the um, Nano itself. It's um, a nice looking design there, it's uh, uh, got a two and a half inch by one and a half inch screen um, and you'll see that it has a number of controls across the top of the unit. On the sides of the unit, on the uh, left hand side here we see these uh, um, coaxial inputs. There's sort of a push fit coaxial input. Um, I haven't actually seen them on an electrical product before. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but they just push firmly into the product themselves. On previous products, uh, Seed Studio used um, sort of mini jacks, which were a lot more common. Uh, so if you were trying to make your own probes up for this device, you might have a little bit more difficulty finding these. If somebody knows what that uh, is called, then I would be grateful if they would uh, leave it in the comments. So we've got the three on the inside here. One of those is for a signal generator, which is an output, and the other two here are for the analog channels. On the other side, we've got another two inputs. These are for the other two channels. Now, the other two channels um, have a fairly uh, low, it's a, a one hertz, uh, what's well, sorry, one kilohertz um, sample rate on them. Um, so they are, are quite a bit low and they only work to logic um, uh, voltages, so you're really only looking at five volts in and out with these. Uh, handy though for testing a signal um, from, for instance, uh, one microchip to another. You'll see also on the side here that we have a USB port. Uh, the USB port is used for a couple of um, uh, tasks on this particular device. Uh, first of all, the device has a two gigabyte storage internally, so it can save the storage. It can store the web the waveforms that you find when you're using it. It will store them in three different formats. It will store them either as a DAT file for uh, replay back to the device. 
or it can store it as a straightforward bitmap file. Very, very handy if you want to post your results up onto, say, for instance, forums and websites, uh, perhaps because you're asking advice or you want to show off uh, something uh, that you've developed. Um, and the other one it'll do is uh, comma separated values so that you can uh, bring those values into, for instance, Excel for um, a more uh, or further analysis on the waveforms. The other purpose for the USB port is it also serves to charge the device. The device itself has a, a LiPo battery uh, behind this battery cover at the back. You'll find also that it has a, a series of um, uh, trim pots here. I'm only guessing, but I suspect that they'll be used for calibrating the device in some manner. The, because this is an engineering sample, we really don't have a lot of documentation yet. It just hasn't been written, but I'm sure by the time the product reaches realisation, there'll be a lot more information available. Uh, just to go through the display itself, uh, the UI that they've supplied with this, again, please bear in mind that this is an engineering sample that we're looking at. Um, so there will be improvements made on this before it becomes the, uh, the realised product. Uh, but they've already uh, got, I would say, most of it completed uh, by now. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, the UI, you can see here uh, on the user interface that we have the actual oscilloscope area itself. Um, we have a menu system across the top of the device um, in the colour-coded uh, form here. And along the bottom of the device we have some status information and um, some further menu items. Down the right hand side of the device here, you can see that what they've done with it is they've used some of the space up to um, give us uh, calculations uh, about what's going on in there. Um, and these, the, the 12 slots that are there, um, are user configurable. So for instance, uh, if I want to, I can go into the menu and I can change, and I'm just editing this item here, I can edit what it is that this item is calculating for or measuring for me uh, and you've got usual voltage me voltage measurements so you can work out the maximum voltage, minimum voltage, uh, point to point voltages etc. Um, there's obviously a lot more when you're working across four channels with so many different type, uh, types of measurements there's a lot more measurements that the device can do than it can actually display on the screen so you can choose from these menus which items it is you want to show at a single point in time. Other bits and pieces on the um, uh, display itself, the channels themselves at the top, um, the menu system that we use to access these, to be uh, honest about it, um, takes a little bit of time to get used to. Uh, please bear in mind, I didn't have any manuals or anything like that to, confer, uh, to read first of all. Um, because they simply haven't been written yet, but if you do decide to buy this product, can I suggest that the manuals would be a good a good read while you're waiting for it to arrive? Uh, the menu system itself, once you get to know it, it's uh, reasonably easy to use. Uh, but if you're just uh, decided to take it out of the box and, and give it a try, it's not the most intuitive uh, menu system that you'll first of all see. The DSO Quad, however, is an open source hardware device. And what we saw with the DSO Nano before, the uh, single channel uh, little brother to this one was that the um, firmware that came out was pretty similar in function to this one here, obviously a lot simpler. But over the, um, the last year or so, uh, because it is open source, Seed Studios encourage people to write their own firmware to control these devices in a better way. And over the year, we saw the nano software or firmware really, really improve over that time. In particular, there's a guy called Ben F, who, um, or calls himself by Ben F, who has uh, rewritten the nano software. And uh, the, those that have downloaded his firmware um, have found that to be way better. Now, Seed Studio are exactly the same with the Quad. They are making it totally open, so the firmware that's supplied as standard um, is functional, but I do expect that you'll see an evolution of this as time goes by, as people start putting their own ideas towards the firmware and coming up with better and better ideas inside their communities. Um, just to go through it then, um, most of the uh, control is, is done via three buttons. The uh, S button at the top here, and these two, I call them flicky buttons, they're little flicks back and forward that um, make them work. One of them moves between menu items and the other one changes the menu values. So for instance you can see channel A is flashing away here. If I hit select, or S for select, I can then alter whether it's DC or AC that I'm measuring um, and I can change the, um, the scale that it's measuring across for instance. You can also change the Y position from here as well, I can move it up and down as also. Uh, same uh, applies, I then use my selector for channel B and I can change, even for instance, um, to hide the channel or display the channel can be done with any of the channels. Um, and we can use that to um, 
operate the displays themselves. So you can see here we've got our signal running through the device. Um, other bits and pieces with it, like any oscilloscope, you expect to be able to change, for instance, your time base, make it smaller or bigger, um, and there is also um, a number of trigger options. So you can see here we've got auto just now, but if I filter through the options, we've got the norm, which uh, it might be a bit quick in its refresh rate to uh, pick up on the camera, um, and we've also got um, there's the single hit. So if you want to capture a single waveform, the device will do that as well. And here you can see a transfer of a, a byte of information between one device to another, captured using the, um, the uh, single trigger event. The trigger events themselves, it allows you to trigger on um, uh, the up or the rise in a signal, the, the drop of a signal, uh, or across, across different voltage thresholds. And that can all be adjusted through the menu here as well. Uh, as I said, the device itself can be used to store information um, and it will store, for instance, to bitmaps. You'll see an example in my review at www.justblair.co.uk um, and these really are useful, as I said before, uh, when you want to post onto forums, uh, then it's easy to do so with this device. And that's my quick run through of it. Um, I'm not going to show, make this a, a, an instructional video as such because as I said before, the software that's supplied on this will vary slightly by the time it reaches full production. Uh, but hopefully you've got some just idea of, of how the uh, display looks and how the device operates. Thank you very much for your time. There are more details available at www.justblair.co.uk.